morning. <clears throat> to begin, I would like to again uh, extend my condolences to the family and friends of Delbert Belton, a World War II veteran who served our country with honor in Okinawa. This morning, just after 3 a.m., members of the Spokane Police Department's Patrol Anti-Crime Team, referred to as PACT, arrested Keenan Adams Kennard. He was taken into custody without incident. He was charged with first degree murder <clears throat> and first degree robbery. Last Friday, August 23rd, Spokane police officers arrested the first of the two suspects. Also, a 16 year old male and charged him with first degree robbery and first degree murder. Today, I would like to assure our community that the two individuals we believe were responsible for the robbery and murder of Mr. Belton have been taken into custody. Since receiving the initial call on Wednesday night, the Spokane Police Department has worked tirelessly to identify and apprehend the suspects in this homicide. Throughout the weekend, major crime unit detectives received numerous tips, were closely with members of the faith-based community and with the adams Kennard family to encourage Keenan adams Kennard to turn himself in and to gain information regarding his whereabouts. Early this morning, PAC team members received information regarding adams Kennard location. Police officers responded to an apartment in the 500 block of West Montgomery in Spokane. Mr. Adams Kennard was taken into custody without incident. Three other young people who were with Adams Kennard have also been taken into custody. They have been charged with rendering criminal assistance to evade police apprehension. The charge is first degree rendering and is a class B felony. The Spokane Police Department is committed to protecting the community and bringing those who harm or threaten our residents to justice. This morning's arrest and the arrest last week demonstrate the professionalism and dedication of our police officers and detectives. I would like to make it very clear, the motive for this attack was robbery. Race was not a factor. Additionally, there was no gang activity that was associated with this incident. I'll take any questions you have. How did you find out where he was? <clears throat> As I said, throughout the weekend, uh, we had been working closely with the Kennard family and with other members of the family receiving information. Uh, it was based on that information that we were able to identify the location. Did the parents call you and tell you? As I said, throughout the weekend we worked with the family, we worked with members of the faith-based community, we received a, a series of tips and we used that information uh, to make the arrest. And you stated that these were young persons who were arrested along with him. Are they all juveniles? I'm not sure if they're all technically juveniles, but they're all they are all young. They all are juveniles. I'm sorry. Were any of them related to Adams Canard, or were they just friends? Just friends. Our information is is that um, the individual fought back, um, and that may have, you know, made this you know a worse situation. And I'm not being critical of Mr. Belton. I would certainly encourage individuals to fight back. Um, and he, he should have, and, but it shouldn't have happened to begin with, right? Um, but I think a robbery just, you know, um, got worse. You can kick somebody hard enough in the head with your feet to give them blunt force trauma injuries that can be fatal. Is there any indication these fellows have brass knuckles or some sort of club or weapon on them? I have no information regarding that. Chief, have you confirmed that they committed any other crimes earlier in the night? any shoplifting or any other assaults? We're We're still looking into that. I'm not going to confirm it. And I have a question about the level of 
what they're convicted with, first degree murder versus a homicide or manslaughter, why murder, meaning that it's pre, uh, premeditated? Well, <clears throat> first of all, this, this took place in the course of another um, very um, uh, vicious crime, um, that being the robbery. Um, the amount of force that was used caused significant injuries, which led to Mr. Belton's death. death. Um, and, you know, there were other pieces of the investigation that I can't really comment on at this point. Um, that would allow us or, or bring us to the point where we would charge first degree murder. That all I think will come out as more of the information is we can release more of the information. Can you describe his connection to the house he was found at? Is it friends? Uh, friends? Yep, just friends. Yeah. Chief, you have lamented on more than one occasion since this murder happened that, that clearly, as a society and community, we're not doing a good enough job reaching out and, and dealing with children that become estranged from either their parents or the education system or something decent and, and right. I mean, they weren't born evil. Do you think that programs like the Youth Athletic League, is that what you're trying to get at? That's what you need more of, this involvement in the community? Because clearly no one, no adult with enough sense to tell Mr. Adams Kennard to turn himself in did that, or he did not respect those adults enough to do what he was being advised, which was certainly to be the best Thing for him to do, and he didn't. Right. So, uh, your programs is that the beginning of, of trying to make these things not happen in the future? Yeah, I think Jeff. That you know, on Friday when I um, talked about the first arrest, I talked about the communal responsibility. Right. So, there was a communal responsibility to help us locate uh, Mr. Adams Kennard. Um, the community did step up. The faith-based community stepped up. His family stepped up. Um, and we were able to, to arrest him quickly. But you're right, there is a much larger um, communal commitment that needs to be made to a host of issues. And, and you know, we have a very troubled um, group of young people, not just in Spokane, but throughout the country, um, that really need the assistance, the guidance, the mentorship of the whole community. The police department um, has certainly taken the initiative now by creating the Youth Basketball League over in East Central. Uh, we will continue to work with not only those young people, um, but other members of our community. Very soon we'll be announcing another program, um, the Youth Police Initiative, which is a program um, specifically to build uh, mentoring relationships between our police officers and, and our young people. Um, it's a program that I initiated when I was in White Plains, New York. It's been replicated and is still being replicated in um, mid-size and major cities throughout the country. Uh, as soon as the, um, the grant is, a, not the grant, but the uh, purchase order or purchase agreement um, with the contractor is approved, which should happen this month, we're looking at initiating that program in October. But this has to be a constant, relentless effort on not just the police department's hand. Um, it really needs to be the whole community. It needs to be the faith-based community. Um, we need to talk about this amongst our politicians. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to Washington um, to speak at a, a national conference on juvenile justice. But we, we have so many issues that are, that are challenging us here, and we have such a wonderful community. I think this is one that we really have to pay very close attention to. Um, and we have to come together and really try to identify those individuals who are most at risk and develop collaborative solutions um, to, to try to help them. Well, it bothers me that a distinguished World War II veteran unnecessarily lost his life. Um, he came close to losing his life in service to this country in Okinawa. Um, and then he gets killed needlessly uh, in the parking lot um, while he's waiting for a friend, right? Um, that's, that's the tragedy of this thing that we have to stay focused on. The second piece, though, is two young men whose lives and the lives of their family are ruined by criminal activity. And as I said earlier, one of these individuals was a, a, a pretty much a, a standout basketball player. And because nobody wrapped their arms around him, nobody cared enough about him, 
he's now going to uh, face, you know, murder and robbery charges, um, and probably, uh, you know, he's looking at um, the rest of his life being significantly effective, affected if not destroyed by this. So, you know, we got to stop talking about these issues, right? We have to start acting. Um, and really coming up, as I said earlier, with collaborative programs. This is not a law enforcement issue. This is a community issue. Um, it's a family issue. And, you know, we have to, as families, and you've heard it from me and you've heard it from um, persons at all levels of government, nationally and locally, uh, you know, the, the essence of this thing begins with the family, right? Um, we have to wrap our arms around our children. We have an obligation. We brought them into this world to make sure that our, our children are successful. And then we as a community have that same obligation. And so where families can't get it together, the community has to.